Well, look who it is, the number one politician in Niagara, according to the people, the people's champion, Laura Yip. How are you? Just in St. Catharines, to be clear. Not all of Niagara. Oh, fair. Okay. All right. Thank you for the clarification. However, as the biggest municipality, you would think, perhaps... I don't want to extend that courtesy, though. I will... Officially, uh, all right, uh, before we get into more serious matters, like last night and tonight, yeah. for a brief respite, and we all need a bit of a, a smile these days. Yeah. Uh, what was it exactly that, that, that like, people just voted and, and you were, like, the top politician in Niagara, most favorite politician? What, yeah, what was like, it for? I, I beat Jim Bradley, so yay. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah, the, the Standard and the Review and the Tribune each do their... Reader's Choice Awards, and people nominate people, and then more people presumably vote for people. <laughs> That's a very technical breakdown of how the process works. All right. Did you uh, yeah. solicit or go door to door? Did you steal any of your neighbor's paper and submit anything? Or were you just like, I had no idea this was going on? I actually, well, no. So I did have an idea it was going on. Actually, uh, Chris Biddle and I were sort of tweeting about how, like, it's just a weird thing. For best politician, right? Like best politician, you decide that on election day. Um, That's right. <laughs> right. So we were kind of tweeting, and and Chris was teasing and said, "Oh, well, you got to beat Jim Bradley." I said, "Ha ha, beat him last year." Um, <laughs> so, and then this year, I didn't only beat Jim Bradley; I beat Chris Biddle. Well, uh, you and Jenny Stevens can claim that over Jim Bradley, I, I guess, <laughs> over the next little while, but. All right, yeah. let's get down to some business. What yeah. did you think of last night's meeting? Because I, I thought it was interesting um, that last night was a great d- example of what the difference between authority and power is. That Dr. Mustafa Herji actually had the authority to yeah. do yeah. what he did. and yeah. But Niagara Region has the power to say, can you reconsider that, right? Well, and we and, and hold the meeting. Ask him to reconsider That's right. it. We do not have any power to compel him to do so. Um, no, the authority, we would call that. You do not have that authority. Yeah, That's have, his authority. That's right. And so, I mean, I actually, because I know this, but I don't know how many, this, well, that sounds super egotistical, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> I knew the answer to this question when I asked it, but I felt it was important to sort of put it out, you know, to be heard on the public record kind of thing. Um, a medical officer of health, exercising his powers that are given to him under the Provincial Health Protection and Promotion Act cannot be compelled by his or her regional council to do anything. So Dr. Herji has made a decision. He has based it on, I mean, he gave us a lengthy, like, I, I mean, the meeting, I had to leave the meeting early, um, which people are not happy about, but too bad. Um, <laughs> um I left and we had already been at it for four hours. Um, He provided a a lengthy presentation with charts and graphs and lots of explanation. He answered questions from nearly every single one of us um, about why he had made the decision. He had, and again, he sent a lengthy, detailed email on the Wednesday before he issued the orders to all of regional council explaining what he was doing and why. Um, so, you know, we can have a meeting and we can say, hey, Dr. Herji, you know, we would really like you to do this. And he can say, well, I have the authority to make these orders and I based it on this evidence. And that's what the province wants us to do is make local specific decisions to help fight or reduce the spread of this virus. So that's what I'm doing. Do you think last night's exercise was effective in in either one educating the rest of council, which shouldn't have to be taken into consideration, but also sort of educating the region as well, like not having, you know, uh, a limited interview on here where, as you said, four plus hours and then you had to leave, which is quite a commitment. I can yeah. talk to Dr. Herji for 10 minutes, right? Like yeah. Yeah. that That's the limit. The paper can talk to him and we, we can have a thousand word column. That That's the limit, right? Yeah. L- last night was an extensive, in-depth and often repetitive yeah. exercise. But do you think it, it accomplished anything? Um, 
I, I mean, I think it probably accomplished some things, but I think it also probably confused people more, right? Because you've got, um, I mean, some of my colleagues were just steadfast that this was wrong and he doesn't have the right to make this decision and that he didn't base it on any evidence, which is completely false. Um, and, you know, if they're just, if, if people are going to just hang on to that point of view and not actually listen um, to what's being presented, then I don't know that it, that it accomplishes much at all. Right. And now we've got the public thinking that regional council has made Dr. Herji rescind or amend this order. And in fact, I mean, the, the motion, I mean, point one in the motion, I'll be I'm going to be frank. <laughs> I would have voted against it um, because it is completely meaningless. Um, and again, it is against the evidence he presented to us. But so we recommend that he amend the directive again we don't have we can recommend all the things we want i can recommend that he have donuts for lunch every day um it's ultimately his decision also don't have donuts for lunch every day i i've talked to a number of uh restaurant owners i've talked to the gncc i've talked to the ontario hotel motel and restaurant association i've talked to restaurants canada my wife is a board member of a restaurant association some of our close friends own restaurants and in fact have closed restaurants i understand the pl- the plight of the restaurant tour i wonder if part of the anger is that um, well, they see this order as sort of arbitrary on the on the households, and I don't want to get into that, but they see a lack of support from yeah. senior levels of government, and they see a yeah. lack of enforcement. Yeah. That that it's a lot of anger at an industry that's getting crushed, yeah. and Dr. Herji is he can't provide uh, financial support. He he no. is not the enforcement tool. And, and so maybe a lot of anger is spilling out and projecting onto him from this specific order. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I said yesterday, actually, I was I was on with Matt yesterday and I said I would I would really like to see I, I'm, I'm thrilled that all of these people came together to rally. That's that is incredible. Um, I don't know that they're rallying, you know, for at the right level of government. I would love to see them rally and, you know, go to the province and go to the feds and say, you need to do something to help us survive this. We don't have we don't have that. I mean, we don't have buckets of money, right? Again, people are going to say, "Oh, province and the feds don't either," and there's only one taxpayer. But it's a it's a much better process as far as taxes go at the provincial and the federal levels, and how they're able to collect those taxes versus us at the regional level. Well, they can also issue bonds and go into debt, Loans, and you cannot. Exactly. Yeah. That, 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 that's what senior levels of government can do that you are yeah. not allowed to do according yeah. to legislation. That's so right. they're the proper, proper ones. Yeah. Uh, what's coming up tonight at regional council? Oh, so many things. Um, we've got on the agenda um, a decision to make with respect to uh, if and how we're going to, if, how, when we're going to enter a recruitment process for our CAO. Um, we've got some things about, um, Niagara Falls has, uh, asked us to reconsider a contract award that we gave. So that'll be interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I have some things to say about that tonight. Um, we've got Niagara Falls has asked us to, um, pass a resolution regarding double direct counselors. I will also have some things to say about that. Uh, because they also, you'll recall, um, shot down a um, very, um, I, I put a lot of effort into a motion with respect to governance at the region. Part of it, actually, there was a friendly amendment about dual duty counselors, and uh, there were only two counselors, myself and Barb Butters, who voted in favor of the motion. Uh, it was otherwise soundly defeated. So I don't know that Niagara Falls should be coming to us to ask us to uh, to do this based on how that first motion was received. Um, what else have we got? Well, let me I mean, go back to one. the... Okay, well, let me go back to uh, the issue brought up by Niagara Falls. And I believe you'll be addressing this um, t- tonight in the biosolids contract. Yep. And uh, I-, I-, I assume... I-, I don't know if it's going to be in camera or not, 
Um, but quite a story. Our friends uh, over at The Standard, uh, Bill Sawchuck and Grant LaFleche, have put together a- a- on this process. Yeah. Um, it-, it-, it really is uh, quite a tale while talking about basically uh, moving poop, right? Like yep. this is a story about yep. moving massive quantities of poop. And uh, I'm sure the puns will be flying free tonight. But uh, can any comment before regional council on this? So, um, I mean, there's so anything we are there's there's a number of items related to it that are in open session. There is a possibility that we'll have to go into closed session uh, because of some things that are connected to it. Um, but I mean, my issue with the the resolution from Niagara Falls uh, is, in fact, that um I don't think they have a whole lot of business wading into the business decisions of the region any more than we have any business wading into their business decisions, right? So calling on us to reconsider a decision and for our staff to go to their council to explain themselves um, is, quite frankly, completely out of line. Uh, I mean, we saw this last term of council with, you know, the regional council trying to get involved in the affairs of Pelham um, completely out of line, Um So we'll be chatting about that, I'm sure. Um, You know, this whole thing is just, it's quite, it's quite muddy. There's been, um, from the councillor who continues to bring it up, um, there's not, he's not especially clear in what his actual issues are, um, but he has also expressed in open session that he's not clear about it because he doesn't trust us. So um, (laughs) it makes it really difficult to make decisions. Um, if a counselor isn't going to disclose the information that they have because they don't trust us. I can't make a okay, decision hold on, a on second. something I don't know about. So he doesn't trust you as counselor. a counselor or the council, the council as a whole. Okay. Counselor, All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, he probably doesn't trust me as a counselor, but uh, <laughs> it was a, it was a broader statement when he made it. <laughs> okay. Uh, any idea how long tonight's session is going to last? All night. Do you think the goodwill exhibited at the start of this council has now has by now dissolved that what started out and listen, I no one expected it to last the entire term. Right. That's just Pollyannish of of any of us. I can't believe. But the honeymoon now seems to be over with this council. Well, maybe not as vicious as last council. It it seems that it's a little a little more divisive than what it was uh, a year ago. That's yeah. I mean, that's probably fair. I think, by and large, um, the the vast majority of us are all very civil to each other and even friendly with each other. Um, I don't know that you know we. I, I think at the beginning of the term there was a whole lot of sort of kumbaya feelings. Um, I don't know that that uh, that that remains. I I mean, I just continue to not make friends um, by you know just <laughs> speaking frankly. Um, <laughs> But it's but fine. are you okay I with can't. that? Like, I, well, are you on council to make friends? Who else am I going to be if I'm not speaking frankly, right? Like, I didn't do this so that I could go and, and put on some show as far as who I am. If people don't know that they're just going to get, you know, me being a straight shooter, like, it's not like it's not like people didn't know that that's who they elected, right? And again, I'm the best politician in St. Catherine, so clearly somebody likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to use that line tonight in any? I should. I should use it on every single item. I'll put my name on the list to speak, and then that's all I'll say. Just a reminder, everyone, I'm the best politician in St. Catharines. Well, uh, maybe the, the only thing is, I don't know how much you watch the NFL <laughs> and uh, or college football. I Get don't. a big gold chain with the plaque on it and wear it in the council, just so as a reminder. You're telling me I get a plaque? Because I don't have a plaque. I think you get a plaque. Every other time I've seen some sort of Reader's Choice Awards, uh, they, 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 um, there seems to be a bit of a plaque. Like, I didn't get a plaque last year, and I was second. Do you only get a plaque if you're first? Like, does uh, Walter have a plaque from last year? Is this what Boy, you're, you're going to have to ask Walter. Uh, you know what? I've seen them at, uh, for instance, the uh, the tire changing place or my salon or something like that. Hey, we got the best wings. I've seen actual plaques, but I not necessarily. Plaque. All right. I think maybe I've spoken okay, out of turn don't here. Give me a plaque. If they don't give me a plaque, will you make me one? Boy, that's a big ask right there. <laughs> what do you see? What I can do though, I'll see what. I'll, I'll see. Give me your artwork. 
and I'll see if I can find a placking or mounting company, and we'll, we'll work have, from there. I have to provide the artwork. Well, I don't know what you wanted to say. I'm providing the <laughs> plaque. And nothing in gold leaf. All right? Oh, no. Absolutely no. nothing in gold leaf. No. Yeah, like it can be okay. just like a, you know, eight by 10 piece of paper on some, yeah. you know, whatever that wood is. It's not really wood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. All right. Let me leave you with one comment from a texter. Okay. And I, I think this Did actually... What? No, 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 no. This is this okay. is really interesting because it goes to the heart of what I've heard some politicians say, not about this council specifically, but every council. If everyone had known everything he'd already presented ahead of time, that would have saved a lot of doubt. Right. Can yeah. people read their material? Can people cut? This is council's not the time to read. Council's right? the time to debate. Reading yes. is ahead of time. Yes. Yes. If people would just read their emails, their reports. All the things. Read them twice if you need to. That's part of what being a politician is about, being yeah. prepared. Yep. Uh, Laurie, yep, uh, go enjoy the meeting tonight if possible. Thanks for joining us on the program today. I'll get back in touch with you on the plaque issue. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tom. Right. Take care. There's Laurie, yep.